Hello students, it's Mrs. Sorley and this webcast will show you how to blast something against a human genome. So you're looking at the blast.ncbi website, National Center for Biotechnolo Biotechnology Information. And if you're looking at the home page, on the blast home page, you can probably already figure out what to do. So here it says blast genomes. We are going to blast a human genome and I don't know what it is by heart, and you probably don't know what it is by heart, but luckily what happens is it pulls up Homo sapiens nucleotide blast and pulls us right where we need to be. So I can enter an accession number or a fast A sequence, and I'm looking to do Cleveromyces lactis, so I happen to remember U94922, and I think you'll remember that accession number as well. So I have an accession number in here. When I tab down, let's see. I'm going to do a somewhat similar sequence just because it opens things up just a little bit. I want to look at my parameters. And I want to make sure that low complexity regions is checked, and it is. So now what I want to do is I'm going to blast human over U94922, and just to remind you what U94922 is, that was Cleveromyces lactis. So at this time you should have a hypothesis what you think this uh, blast will show for results. They have humans and Cleveromyces lactis has something in common. Um, about one-third of humans are able to process milk uh, for its nutrients. And we do know that K. lactis is able to process milk and it turns into cheese. And now let's take a look at what we have. First of all, do you notice when you blasted anything else, the description box here always had been populated for a, you know many more species. So already I see that this box looks pretty small. It's alarming to me, like I notice it right away. And then we look under max score we only have a 6% coverage here, a 4% hit, a 5% hit, a 4% hit. E values you want as close to zero as possible, 5.2 is high. Ident numbers you want at a 98, 99, 100. I don't have anything very close. And I do have some accession numbers to take a look at. When I go down to alignments, I can see a couple of things. So on homo, homo sapiens, which is humans, chromosome number three, the, what I put in for data, which would be my K-lactis, that's query, this is what it shows, and the capital letters are the actual bases coming off U94922. These lowercase letters are equivalents, like in, it would serve the same purpose. So G's and A's line up, A's line up. And then right here where you see the dashes, they just are, the computer algorithm is like, you know what, it's not good enough to call it a match. So it goes from place 342 to place 375, and it's still not 100%. On humans chromosome 9, it goes from 82 to 107, and it has a pretty good hit here, but that's only a few. On chromosome 13, it goes from 103 to 131. And you can see which ones line up. You'll see the little lines between. And if you don't see a line between, like C and T here, that's telling you something. It's a misalignment. Under chromosome 14, we can analyze the th same thing. Again, it went from our U94922 from the base place of 101 to 126. And that should bring a bell from you for you when you use mega. You can see the uh, different numbers where we can um, take a look at the base pairs with that program. And then the subject is the subject that we're using, and that is Homo sapiens. So if you go down here, in the course of the billions of DNA base pairs that humans have, billions was correct. We really don't have a good hit. 
I don't feel confident with this. I definitely don't feel confident with these e-values, error values. I don't feel confident with these numbers. So now my next question to you would be, what would a scientist conclude about this result and what questions would they have to, to ask?